Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, this is your time to subscribe. It's such a simple thing to do and it costs you nothing, but it really helps the channel grow. So, the more of you subscribe, the more videos I can create. So, please, uh, if you haven't subscribed, click the subscribe button here. I'll give you two seconds to do that. Okay, so hopefully you have subscribed and uh, thank you very much if you've done that. So last time we left this, we had uh, created, we completely finished with uh, creating questions, test questions here. So all we need now is to allow the students to take the tests. So in order for this to happen, we need, the student needs a place to view uh, the tests that have been given to them. So, for example, if the teacher adds a test to a particular class like this, the student may belong to 10, 20 classes, who knows? And uh, it would be very difficult for the student to go through all those classes just to check which ones have new tests to, uh, to take. So instead, what we would do is, if you go to the student's profile themselves, let's go to this profile right here. If I click on tests, it should show what tests uh, the student is eligible to take. And then it should show which ones have been taken by the students and which ones have not. That would be a much simpler system so that the student only needs to come to their profile check for new tests regardless the class they're in they should see those tests here so we already know how to collect the classes that a student belongs to now we just need to use those classes to check whatever tests are in those classes we add them here so let's look at the current mechanism that enables us to check what tests are there then we can build from that so let's look at a student that actually belongs to a specific class. So let's see here. So Mr. Guy is um, here. Yeah. So let's look at, uh, this is a profile controller. Okay, so I'm on completely the wrong project here, but bear with me for a second. Let me go to the correct project and I can close this other one. Okay, so back here, we're going to go to the controller. That's the profile.php because that's what it says up here. And then I want to look at the index because this is where we're reading from because this is just read mode. So if the tab, let's see here, if the page tab is classes, this is what we get, right? Now, we just need to add an else statement and look at if it is tests, then what do we get? So since we, we will need to get the classes anyway, let's just duplicate this one more time. Boom. And then I'm going to move that if statement there. Just add an else statement over here like so. Okay, so else this. If this tab is tests, uh, let's click on it just to confirm. Yes. If it is tests, like so, and row does exist, then we are here. So at this point, this, um, let's see, student classes, what was this doing anyway? Uh, table, student classes. Psh, 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 psh. I have no idea. What are we sending to the result is... Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is the point here where data student classes, we're adding to this in order to send it to the view. So, yes, class ID first. So at the end of the day, all we have to take away is that data student classes contains all the classes that we need. 
So at this point, once we are here, we just need to come to this location and let's echo what's in here. So I'll just do show like that and let's see what's inside there at this point. Refresh. Okay, so this is what we've got. All right, so that, um, that point leads us to here. So inside this array is an object. So this is an array of objects. If we had several classes, we would have a zero, we would have a one, and each one of them would have an object that has this. So this is good, but we're not interested in the classes themselves. We want the tests from these classes. So how do we know that a test uh, belongs to this class? Well, we have the class ID. This is what they exchange. If we do go to, uh, let's see here, class tests, I actually totally forgot that we had this table class tests and I created a tests table here, completely unaware of this one. So weirdly. So let's look at the tests themselves. So if I click here, and we just need the test, not the questions. So the thing that links this test to the class is the class ID. So easy enough. So any test with this class ID belongs to that class. Mm -hmm. Cool. So think about it. These will be several classes and each one of them will have tests. So what I need is the class IDs of all the classes that are inside this item. So I can do so by getting the, um, I, I can loop through and just get all the class IDs. So let's do that right now. So here what I would do is I'll say collect class IDs. Now to, let's see here, selector from where user ID is, you go to user ID, why am I getting all this? Seems like we, um, ah, anyway, regardless of that, collect all the uh, class IDs. Let's do a for each loop here. So there's a for each, and we'll put this item here. I'll go through this code and see if we can simplify it somehow. Uh, student classes, okay, as key and value. So the value here is the object, which is the row. That now we can't use row because we are using it ready here. So you have to be careful about doing such things. So maybe we say std row like that, Oh, these are classes, so class row like this. Okay, so let's create a variable called class IDs, like so, and equate it to an empty array. And then in here, we will do class IDs. Then let's add to it. And let's get the class row, and then we get the class ID, like that. Okay, so in our case, we only have one class ID, so we're going through all this just to get that one class ID, because there's only one class anyway. So if I now do a show class IDs, oopsie, what am I doing? Press the insert there for a second. Mm -hmm. So let's refresh. And this is all we have. So we have that. Now, if we had many classes that this user belongs to, we would have all those here. Now, when you have several items that you need to add to your SQL statement, you use the in keyword. So here, what we want to do is get all the tests that belong to the class IDs that are in here. So what I'm going to do is implode this class ID so that we can uh, use it as a string. So ID string like that is equal to implode. 
So the implode function, what it does is it gets an array and then implodes it into a string. And then you get to specify the glue, which is the text that will be in between the items that were in separate uh, locations in the array. So here what I want to do is put, uh, let me put double quotes on the outside, then single quotes in the inside, and then put a comma like this. So I want to put a quote, comma, another quote between these pieces. And then the pieces are from this array, which I will put here like this. Okay. So this is our string, but the string needs to close these quotes on the end and in the beginning, because remember that these will be in between the, um, the items. So on the, at the beginning and at the end, we need another single quote there, concatenate to this implosion, and then concatenate another one on the outside. So now I want us to see the ID string here. Okay, so let's refresh again, and there we go. So in our case, because there's only one item, we just got a, a inverted comma at the beginning and another one at the end. If we had several of these, we'd have a comma here and then another quote, another opening quote and a closing quote and a comma in between. So that way we can use this inside an SQL. So let me just call this one, uh, let's say query. I'll put a number there just to differentiate it from other queries, but even though it doesn't really matter because when we, create a query we use it immediately so then we have no need for it so i guess we don't need to worry about replacing it and then here we'll have our our query so the query i'm going to run is select o from oopsie so select o from we're looking for tests so tests where uh, plus ID underscore ID is equal to now instead of just saying equal to here we'll say in where class ID in and then we put brackets where we want to put that in so this in is used to read when you have multiple items um, instead of saying equal to because if let's say you want to retrieve an item items that have an ID of four and another one of five, another one of seven, another one of nine. So what you would do is you get all these IDs and you put them here like so. So you just say class ID in and then you put them like that. Then you need to get all of this. But the problem is we're using uh, text strings here. So we have to put quotations like this. Okay. And now if you notice, this is what I told it to put in between these content, a quotation, comma, quotation, like that. And then one at the beginning and one at the end. So this is what we have in this ID string. So I'll copy this and put it right there, like so. Okay, so select all from that. And then now we can just run the um, this that reads, this is the classes model. I'd rather we run the tests model because of the extra, uh, the after, what do you call them? After select functions will run when we use that. So here I'm just going to say tests is equal to new tests model. And uh, I'll do that instead. And then I want to do tests to be the rows themselves. And I will do tests model query like this. And then we can run our query like so. Very cool. Uh, yeah, now let's see what we get as a result. There's only one test, so let's see if we're going to see that one test from that place. So let's see here. 
and let's refresh. So we have a syntax error on line 78. It says unexpected token comma. So let's see, line 78, where is the unexpected? Oh, right here, sorry, my bad. I forgot to remove those things there. Refresh, and there we go. So as you can see, this is a test, right? Uh, my first test, a description of a test. Now, in order to confirm that this is working well, we will need to create another test and then display the tests here. So just to confirm that we'll get two results, let's go to tests, uh, let's see this test, and let's use the same class right here and add a test. So this one is a second test like this. Yeah description for a second test just to see that happens and let's create another test okay so we have two tests in this class which the user is eligible to um, work with so let me click on the users uh, the students and then click on tests and there we go so we get this test and we get this test as well so it's working very well. All we need now is to display the tests right here, which we already have a way to display tests as in here. Okay, so I'll see you in the next video where we do that.